Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at an electrolytic cell, so stay tuned. Before we get to the function of an electrolytic cell, let's learn the components. This is a basic electrolytic cell. Let's look at the components. First, we have a dry cell. This dry cell is actually an electrochemical cell, but we'll cover that in another video. So here we have a dry cell, which is the power source, which drives the movement of electrons in the electrolytic cell. Then we have the connecting wires that connects the dry cell to these, which are called the electrodes. We have two electrodes. If it is connected to the positive terminal of the dry cell, then it is the positive electrode. If it is connected to the negative terminal of the dry cell, then it's the negative electrode. And we have the electrolyte. I will do a separate video on what an electrolyte is. In order to properly understand what is going on in, in an electrolytic cell, we have to study the direction of the electron flow. So first let's look at current flow. Because current flow is conventionally defined as flowing from positive terminal to the negative terminal of the power source. So here is the dry cell. So current is going to flow from the positive terminal here, out here, and then back to the negative terminal. This is the direction of flow of current. However, electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So it's the opposite direction as the current flow. Anode is defined as the site where electrons are donated to the external circuit. So whenever we define anode and cathode, we must always remember the definition is with reference to the external circuit. And the external circuit here is the connecting wires and the dry cell. This is the external circuit. Whenever we talk about movement of electrons, we talk about movement of electrons in the external circuit. Electrons do not flow in the electrolyte. Ions are discharged here, which is what we looked at later. But electrons do not flow from here, this negative electrode to the positive electrode. That does not happen. It only flows from electrode to electrode in the external circuit. So earlier, we already found the direction of flow of electrons. So now we can define which is our anode. Here, the positive electrode also acts as the anode because this is where electrons are donated to the external circuit. That's an easy way to remember this. This is anode. When we flip the word around, we get E donor. So if you ignore the E, we have donor here, donate. So anode, donate. In an electrolytic cell, the anode is also the positive electrode. But this is not always the case. But for an electrolytic cell, the positive electrode is the anode. And the cathode is the opposite of the anode. So the cathode is where electrons are accepted from the external circuit. This is the external circuit. Electrons are coming into the electrode here. So this is the cathode. In an electrolytic cell, the cathode happens to be the negative electrode. This is not always the case, but it is true for an electrolytic cell. So we already know how electrons move in the external circuit. Now in the electrolyte, as I mentioned earlier, electrons do not flow through the electrolyte from electrode to electrode. What happens in the electrolyte is that ions will be discharged at the electrodes. So ions will move towards the electrodes. Now we have two types of ions, cations and anions. Cations are positively charged, anions are negatively charged. So for electrostatic forces of attraction, positive attracts negative, negative attracts positive. So at the positive electrode, negative ions will be attracted towards the positive electrode. Those are the anions. Anions are attracted towards the positive electrode and cations, the positive ions, will be attracted towards the negative electrode. First, let's look at what happens at the anode. So here, since the anode here is the positive terminal, what happens is anions are discharged. The negative ions are discharged here. What do we mean by discharge? It's very simple. Discharge means from charged particle to neutral particle. That's what discharge means. It loses its charge. That's what it means. So here, since it is a negative ion, it has excess electrons. Electrons are donated. That's the only way it can discharge. It can give away 
the excess electrons so this is why electrons are donated into the external circuit here and by donating the electrons the anions will become neutral the general equation looks like this let's say we have anion y with charge of m minus it will become y neutral y with m number of electrons donated into the external circuit when the charge is m minus it means that y has m extra electrons in order to become neutral it has to give away m number of electrons then at the cathode since it's the negative electrode it will attract positive ions which are the cat ions so cat ions will come to the negative electrode and since it is positively charged the only way it can become positively charged is if it has lost electrons before that means it is lacking electrons now the positive charge is more than the negative charge because it has previously lost electrons so in order to become neutral when it is positive it has to gain electrons so here the cat ions will accept electrons from the external circuit to be discharged to lose its charge to become neutral this is the general equation if we have x with a charge of n plus since it has n plus charge it needs n minus charge so we add n electrons for n minus charge to become neutral if you haven't seen the video on oxidation and reduction the video link is at the corner but by definition oxidation is when electrons are lost and reduction is when electrons are gained so here at the anode we have a discharge of n ions so when we have a discharge of n ions negative ions have extra electrons they are being donated to this external circuit when electrons are being donated by the n ions then oxidation is taking place for cat ions cat ions are accepting electrons because they have a positive charge they can accept electrons from the external circuit so since they are accepting electrons then reduction is taking place since by definition anode is where electrons are donated so oxidation will always take place at the anode and since by definition electrons are always accepted at the cathode then reduction will always take place at the cathode the energy conversion that takes place in an electrolytic cell is from electrical energy to chemical energy here we start with supplying electrical energy to the circuit to the external circuit and then when the ions are discharged they turn into chemical energy so from electrical energy to chemical energy that's it for this video guys i hope you've learned something if you have please don't forget to support me by hitting the like button and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe i'll be producing at least one video a week i'll see you in the next video